Howdy from Austin, Texas. If you're thinking about relocating to Texas and you don't know whether to move to Dallas or Austin, you where are you gonna look? So I'm glad you found my channel. We are all about all things Austin. How to relocate, where to go, what to do, what you're doing if you're moving around, if you're moving in, if you're moving out. So all things Austin, we are gonna talk about. Today we're comparing Dallas with Austin. So while Dallas is a much, much, much bigger city, Austin has a lot of really amazing things to offer as well. It really depends on what works for you and your family and what you're looking for. So let's dive into it and uh, we'll help you find the best place for you and your family. Now, locals and newcomers from all other states are moving into Texas. And the big question that we get is, why would we move to Austin? Why not move to Dallas or Houston, someplace that's a little bit bigger and maybe has a little bit more to offer? So let's break it down. Um, Austin has experienced a remarkable surge in growth recently. And it's also seen its real estate values skyrocket in recent years. So we're gonna talk about the, um, the housing differences between Austin and Dallas quite a bit in this video. Similarly though, Dallas has witnessed a skyrocket in um, premium real estate as well. So it's also a competitive market for buyers who are looking to relocate. Um, the decision of which metro city is more suitable for an investment can be a challenging one. So it really depends on if you're moving in to stay or if you're looking for more of, you know, where are you gonna make your money work for you the best? So we will compare and contrast that. All right, let's talk about employment opportunities. <laughs> Finding a job is really going to be probably your number one factor in where to live. Um, unless you're fully remote and you can work anywhere, which unfortunately, I think those days are coming to an end for most employees and employers. Uh, it was fun while it lasted, though. Um, so, But choosing where you're going to work and getting a job is probably the number one factor in where you're going to live. So both Austin and Dallas outshine many other cities in the country in terms of employment prospects. The tech industry in particular has played a pivotal role in driving rapid growth in Austin. Austin currently ranks 23rd out of the 180 largest US metropolitan areas, which is backed up by over 25% job growth in the past decade. That's huge. We have hundreds of people moving here every single day. So they're moving from out of state, they're moving from other cities, they're moving from the suburbs into town. And it's mostly driven by tech jobs. If you talk to, I mean, three out of every five people that you talk to in Austin work in some realm in tech. They're in tech sales, they're software developers, they're software engineers, um, you know, they're, they're in startups, right? This is the whole vibe of Austin is, you know, I'm a young software person. I'm a young uh, tech person and I want to have fun and I make good money and I live in Austin. So that is very the central Austin kind of feel and how conversations go pretty much anybody that you talk to, either that or they're a real estate agent um, or there's some kind of like try to be real estate investor. Um, Dallas, however, ranked 112. So just a little bit uh, under... Austin for that. Um, they 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 have over a thousand corporate headquarters. Dallas does. So Dallas Fort Worth, that metroplex, that big area, has one of the largest concentrations of company headquarters in the nation. They have large companies such as American Airlines, Southwest Airlines, Verizon, Texas Instruments, J.P. Morgan Chase, Lockheed Martin. Those are all headquartered in Dallas. Um, so ensuring there's a, a wide array of jobs in the DFW area. Now, when I say Dallas-Fort Worth area, this isn't talking about just one little one little central area, right? Dallas-Fort Worth is a massive kind of conglomerate of cities that takes up you know, miles. So uh, I'll have to look up the specific miles uh, like across Dallas, but it's huge. When I refer to Austin, I really am kind of referring to the small metroplex. We're a pretty small town, really, when you compare us with uh, big cities like Austin, or sorry, with Houston and Dallas. So Austin's pretty small. So to house as many jobs and as many job creation, uh, as much job creation and as much job growth as we have, that really says a lot. Um, okay, likewise, Austin hosts several prominent companies, including Google, Amazon, Facebook, and recently, the new headquarters of Elon Musk's uh, Tesla is here, uh, SpaceX is here. So the majority of Austin's major companies specialize in tech, making it a hub of innovation. We have the um, the Army Space, whatever they're called, Space Force, 
<laughs> um, they moved here. So it's very high, it's very tech, a very tech forward city. So let's talk about housing costs. Both Austin and Dallas present a diverse array of homes, ranging from cool downtown, chic vibe, and trendy neighborhoods to family-friendly suburbs. Considering the size difference between Austin and Dallas, one might expect housing costs to be quite a bit different, but surprisingly, it's not the case. So in the most recent data, this was as of, you know, let's say August 2023, Dallas real estate tends to be more affordable compared to Austin. The median home cost in Dallas stands around $260,000, and the same figure for Austin is around $550,000. So the medium home, median home cost in Austin is approximately 112% higher. Now, this goes back to what I was just saying about the area that DFW covers versus the area that Austin covers. So if you're looking in central Dallas, you're not going to find a $259,000 house. But because they factor in these huge concentric circles, right, that, that comprise of the DFW metroplex, then whenever you're out here in these, in these circles that are pretty far from the city, that's where you're going to find your more affordable housing. Austin hasn't really built out those circles yet. We're just kind of one little small box with a few suburbs that go off to, you know, that kind of go off like a wagon wheel. And so there, there's not a lot of transportation in. So people have to really live central in order to get to their job. So if you have to get to a job in the city, you're going to want to live pretty central because there's not really good ways to get into the city that, that don't get backed up with a ton of traffic. So that's why the cost of housing in central Austin is significantly more than in DFW, because everyone has to kind of pack in close to get to be downtown, if that's where you're working. Um, prospective buyers are more likely to find new construction in Austin versus Dallas. So because Austin is small and because our population is growing so rapidly, there is a ton of new construction. And this is where you can really get your good deals. Now, you might be a little bit further out of town. You might have to take one of those wagon wheel spokes out to a suburb. But if you're OK living in Round Rock, in Pflugerville, in Leander, in Liberty Hill, um, if you're okay driving to Dripping Springs or down south to Menchaca or out to Del Valley or up to Maynard, right? All of these little offshoots. If you're okay with maybe a 20 to 30 minute commute, you can get brand new new construction housing, you know, 20 to 30 minutes into town where with Dallas, that's going to be a little bit harder to do because those big circles have already been built. They've already been expanded. Okay, um, so here's a small breakdown of housing statistics for Dallas versus Austin. Again, this was in about August of 2023. So we went over median home costs, 259 in Dallas, 551 in Austin. Median home age, 42 years in Dallas, 31 years in Austin. So it's just a newer city. Average rent, $1,660 in Dallas, $1,730 in Austin. So even rent is more expensive in Austin. Um, percentage of home ownership. I thought this was really interesting. In Dallas, the percentage of homes owned was 36%. In Austin, 41% of the homes are, are lived in by homeowners. So you have more of a purchasing uh, demographic versus a renting demographic in Austin versus Dallas. Um, rented homes, of course, this is going to be flip-flopped. It's higher in Dallas versus in Austin. For those inclined towards renting, the average rent for an apartment in Dallas is 1662 we just said, and the average rent in Austin is $1,730. So with this in mind, Dallas may offer a more attractive option for budget-conscious buyers who are looking for a home with the potential for continuous appreciation, or if you just want to, you know, dip your toe into Texas, you're not quite sure where you want to live, and you can't afford, you know, $17, $18, $2,000 a month in rent. Um, okay. General cost of living. Dallas boasts a relatively affordable cost of living index at 101 when compared to other metro cities in the country. Conversely, Austin's cost of living is 28% higher than Dallas, making it more expensive in relative terms just within Texas. So a breakdown of the cost of living in Dallas and Austin. Food and groceries, Dallas is actually higher. They probably have uh, more high-end restaurants that skews that price up a bit. Transportation, higher in Dallas. Uh, utilities, higher in Dallas. Now, health, when they talk about um, cost of living as far as health, Austin is higher and the overall index is higher. Um, with this, I'm thinking it's probably more like um, 
things that we spend our money on that create a sense of health. So if we're talking about gyms, gym memberships, um, country club memberships, golf club memberships, people in Austin love to be outside. They love to take care of themselves. They love to be healthy. If you put kind of like healthy, organic on the end of anything, people in Austin will eat it up. So we probably skew way heavier on that end, on the health and wellness side in Austin than we do in Dallas, just because that's a big like perk of why people live here and what you really get into once you move here. So even if you're not really into the health and wellness scene, when you move here, believe you, believe me, you will get into it real quick once you're here. Okay, crime rates. So when we're talking about crime rates in Dallas versus Austin, it is, it, it's essential to acknowledge that larger cities typically have higher crime rates, right? That's just how it works. Um, one point to consider is Austin's murder rate over a 10 year period. Um, it doesn't necessarily indicate that Austin is more crime prone than Dallas, but um, let's see, in 2019, Austin reported 79,931 crimes within the city limits, while in Dallas, with a population of 1.3 million, recorded only 95,428 crimes during the same period. So if you take the populations into consideration, it kind of evens out. Again, it's going to depend on what part of town you live in. Talking about the transportation network. So this is really important if you're not going to live central or if you're not a driver. If you're coming from a city like San Francisco or, or New York and you're not used to driving everywhere, both of these cities are gonna be a little bit difficult to navigate because they are driving focused cities. Um, but Austin's gonna be even harder to navigate because we don't have a great mass transit system. It's in the works, they're working on it. You know, There's been plans for decades, but nothing's been agreed upon yet. And so we don't, we don't have a system and we don't really have a plan to put one in place. So if you need some kind of train system, if you need uh, public transportation, Dallas is probably going to win on this one pretty heavily. So Dallas has the Dallas area rapid transit system. They operate buses, light rail, streetcars and trolleys within the city, extending out into the suburbs. Austin has kept Metro, which is their bus rail, and they have some small Metro trains and buses that connect downtown to some suburbs. But they're not really used very much, and um, so they're not really they're not really robust. Let's put it that way. Um, Austin does have a reputation for being bike and scooter friendly. So things like B cycle, Lime, Bird scooters, those are all over the place. They're just kind of like littering the streets of Austin. Um, Austinites really rebelled against them. Some did <clears throat> when they first came into town, and you'd find, you know, Lime scooters thrown in the river, stuff like that. But because they were everywhere, but they are a really convenient way to get around town quickly if uh, you don't want to catch a bus that there aren't that many of. So, uh, okay, spectator sports. If you are really into professional sports, Dallas is going to take this one hands down. Both Dallas and Austin offer options for sports enthusiasts, but Dallas really outshines Austin in terms of professional sports teams. So Dallas has world-class events like the World Series, the Super Bowl, has several pro teams, including the Texas Rangers, the Dallas Cowboys, FC Dallas, and the Dallas Mavericks. In contrast, Austin tends to focus more on college sports. So the University of Texas is huge. The whole town really cheers on the UT football team. Um, it draws significant attention. And so there's game days. Everyone wears orange. Even if you didn't go to UT, you suddenly become a UT fan once you live here. Uh, it's interesting, right? You'll see somebody with a UT jersey on. You're like, oh, did you go to school? Or they're like, oh, no, I'm from California. I just, you know, go horns. So that happens once you move here too. You become a health enthusiast and you become a UT fan. Just right when you get off the airplane, they hand you a jersey and they hand you a green smoothie and they're like, good luck. Welcome to Austin. Um, so professional sports enthusiasts in Austin will probably watch, you know, UT football. They may watch the Austin FC, which is the new soccer team that we have here in Austin. And we also have the Round Rock Express, which is the um, like minor league baseball. Where to shop? For shopping enthusiasts, Dallas presents the shopping paradise. Shoppers can indulge in a range of retail adventures from budget-friendly and family-oriented shopping sprees to high-end luxury brands. There's shopping destinations that include Highland Park Village, North Park Center, and the Galleria Dallas. Smaller gyms in Dallas, like Knox Henderson and the Design District, ensure that there's no shortage of places to shop until you drop. Austin also offers a satisfying retail therapy experience. There are various neighborhoods, such as Sixth and Lamar, South Congress, 
which is what we call SoCo, and the Second Street District, which has a lot of locally owned shops and some eclectic high-end fashion outlets. Now, along South Congress, there are a lot more high-end shops that have been brought in in the last couple of years. So that used to be a lot of mom and pop shops, costume shops, kind of fun vintage places. Those have all been priced out, um, unfortunately, because of property taxes and rent. And so now you have, you know, high end, high end apparel, um, high end athletic leisure wear, uh, you know, high end men's wear, high end shoes. So you have a lot of really luxury shopping along that South Congress corridor just south of downtown that we haven't had in years past but it really is turning over into a much more, you know, kind of luxury destination. Um, if you're outside of Austin proper, then you also have the Arboretum at Great Hills. You have the Barton Creek Mall, uh, which is Southwest. You have the Domain, which is a massive outdoor shopping experience that is Northwest Austin. So most of the big mall shopping is along the West side. So if you are a mall shopper, if you like going to the mall, if you like going shopping, you probably want to live you know, skew further west whenever you're looking for housing because that's where all the shopping is. If you're seeking like unique gifts though, you can still go to South, South Congress and find things like Alan's Boots, Uncommon Objects, some really fun kind of kitschy little, um, you know, we might find trinkets, you might find souvenirs for Austin. So you'll do that on South Congress as well. All right, vibrant nightlife. If you're looking for an exciting nightlife, Austin is renowned for its entertainment scene. Known as the live music capital of the world, it's, it boasts over 250 live music venues covering every musical genre imaginable. The 6th Street District in particular is, in, is famous for its entertainment options. Now, if you talk to people that have lived in Austin for a really long time, they're going to say that the music scene is dead, everybody's moved to Nashville, it's over, it used to be hip and cool, and you know now it's not anymore. I get it you know, small musicians are being priced out. That has changed some, but people still go out to listen to music all the time. You know, maybe bigger bands are playing here. The smaller ones, it's different. Austin has grown. Like I'll definitely give them that. It's not the, you know, hole in the wall kind of listen to some obscure band that you've never heard of place. There are still some places like that, um, but we're getting much bigger acts come in all the time. So if you're a musician and you're wanting to move to Austin, it still is a fantastic place to come get discovered. However, with rent being so expensive, musicians and artists are just having a little bit of a harder time really finding a place to call home here in Austin um, like they used to because it's gotten so expensive. And so if you're not making a lot of money in your music career, Austin has become a more difficult place to live. Um, but it still is the live music capital of the world. Nashville cannot take this from us. And uh, so if you love music, come in. South by Southwest is like a three week now um, uh, musical and film and art fest that uh, has musicians playing in every venue on every street corner all over the city. We have Austin City Limits, which is coming up here in October, which used to be one weekend. It used to be two days, one weekend, and then it started being three days on one weekend, and then it moved to two weekends. So now we have two weekends in a row that are all downtown in Zilker Park, and it's bands from noon to 10 p.m., at, at five different stages. I mean, it's absolutely massive. Hundreds of thousands of people come through to this music festival. If you haven't checked it out, I recommend coming in. Um, October is usually pretty good weather. And so sometimes it's rained and when it rains out in ACL, it's absolutely, it's wild because you're, you know, ankle deep mud um, with a hundred thousand people trying to get out of there getting soaking wet. So it's a wild time, but ACL is definitely something to check out. If you are coming into Austin and you want to experience something that's very, very Austin, that would be one to come to that or come to South by Southwest in the spring. Okay, um, Dallas has its uh, fair share of entertainment venues as well. There's Deep Ellum in the Deep Ellum neighborhood. You have the Texas Live Complex in Arlington. Um, and so Austin has the edge as, a live, as the live music capital, but Dallas probably has a more diverse selection, especially if you're looking for sports themed hangouts. All right, local schools, both Dallas and Austin take pride in their excellent schools. Dallas boasts three high schools that have made it into the top 10 high schools in Texas as per the US news list. In comparison, Austin only had one on that list top Dallas high schools. You have the School for the Talented and Gifted. You have the Irma Lerma Wrangell Young Women's Leadership School, and you have the Science and Engineering Magnet School. In Austin, the top high school is the Liberal Arts and Science Academy, which we all uh, call LASA. 
In terms of higher education, the Dallas area is home to 37 colleges and universities, including the University of Dallas, Southern Methodist University, or SMU, as we call it. And Austin, with its college town reputation, has 15 colleges. The University of Texas at Austin is one of the largest and highest ranked universities in the country. So that adds to Austin's appeal as a city with a strong academic presence, particularly with kind of the cult-like following of its football team, the Longhorns. Um, I heard a statistic that said within, I think it's a 50 mile radius, Austin has more college students than any other city in the entire nation. And so that's another reason why um, a lot of companies move here and start their headquarters here in Austin because they have thousands and thousands and thousands of college, soon to be college graduates to recruit from every single year. Freedom and vibe, the city's atmospheres differ significantly when it comes to the overall vibe. Uh, Dallas projects projects a more business oriented, refined and upscaled environment with the perception of being somewhat materialistic. I do believe that the phrase, the bigger the hair, the closer to Jesus was coined in Dallas. Um, if you go to a business meeting in Dallas, you're definitely going to wear a suit, you're going to wear a tie, you're going to have on slacks. On the other hand, Austin has a laid back, funky, fun loving vibe. So it's often associated with a hip and accepting culture. You can go to a restaurant, you can go to a nice restaurant in Austin in flip flops. You can 100% wear cutoffs to a steakhouse. If you like, I went and met with a with an attorney. We we're working on a ten million dollar project. He had on Birkenstocks and um, cargo shorts, and he said he doesn't even go to his Dallas and Austin offices anymore because he refuses to wear a suit. So we're trying to really hold on to that with all the upscale shopping and all the luxury housing that's moving in. There's that creep, you know, it's creeping in of like, you have to be fancy to be in Austin. I'm holding tight and I'm wearing flip flops to dinner. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to like hold the line there for us Austinites who really, really enjoy the casual feeling of living in Austin. Uh, so for buyers prioritizing value and space in their investment, Dallas is probably the way that you would want to go. On the other hand, if Austin offers a better fit for those who are willing to invest in an easier commute to work or school, as long as you live close, there's an abundance of entertainment options. Both cities have unique charm and advantages. So really, it comes down to your personal preference and priorities. If moving to Austin sounds like the best thing for you, then call, reach out. Uh, that's what I'm here for, helping people like you make that help make that decision and figure out where you want to live. If Austin is the right place, where in Austin works for you, which schools, which school districts, where your job is going to be, what your commute is like, I can help you answer all of those questions. So reach out and let's find the best place for you.